the French president manipulated the transcript after an interview with Politico. They noted at the bottom of the article, they say, as is common in France and many other European countries, the French president's office, known as the Elysee Palace, insisted on checking and, quote, proofreading this entire article. All the president's quotes to be published in this article were going to be proofread as a condition of granting the interview. So the president will talk and then we'll edit what you get to publish. Cool, well, that's not how we do things. Well, then you don't get the interview. Okay, I guess we'll do it that way. Perfect, we'll sit down and talk with you. Now, Politico says this violates Politico's editorial standards and policy, but they agree to the terms in order to speak directly with the French president. So whatever's in this article is not the full story. It's not the full truth. Politico insisted that it cannot deceive its readers and would not publish anything the president did not say. The quotes in this article were all actually said by the president, but some parts of this interview in which the president spoke even more frankly about Taiwan and Europe's strategic autonomy were cut by the French. So what's the point in reading this article? if it's all just limited. I mean, we can get some themes and extrapolate the themes, but it sounds like the French want to go even further, saying that Europe is facing a great risk by being embedded with the United States. Said that they have to reduce its dependency on the United States lest they be dragged into war with China over Taiwan. So when he actually sat down and spoke with French before they censored the story, he talked about becoming a third superpower and about strategic autonomy. He said that there is a great risk that Europe faces when it gets caught up in a crisis that is not ours, which is interesting because some people have been having that position with Ukraine for a long time. Now, I know most of the Western world, that idea is blasphemous, but if we ask ourselves, which countries have more strategic benefit for the United States? Can you make an argument for Taiwan versus Ukraine? But we have been told in the United States that we needed to go over there and fight in Ukraine so that Russia doesn't take over all of Europe. So it sounds like maybe that is a crisis that is not ours. And it prevents us, the United States, from building our strategic autonomy. We've got problems at our own border. We may have a chip shortage if Taiwan gets gobbled up by the Chinese, which is probably gonna be happening soon. So why is the United States bending over backwards to save Europe if the French are just saying, well, you know, we're kind of not even interested in helping you guys. We thought it was this great Western alliance that everybody was gonna rally around and stop the dictators. Not true. In this case, the French are meeting with the Chinese, flying from Beijing to Guangzhou in Southern China aboard France's Air Force One. She and the CCP have enthusiastically endorsed Macron's concept of strategic autonomy, and Chinese officials refer to it in their dealings. Party leaders and other theorists are convinced the West is in decline, and China is on the ascent. Apparently, Macron said, the paradox would be that, overcome with panic, we believe we are just America's followers. The question Europeans need to answer, is it in our interest to accelerate a crisis on Taiwan? No, the worst thing, would be to think that we Europeans must become followers on this topic and take our cue from the US agenda and Chinese overreaction. So remember all of these people screaming at us about alliances and allies and billions and millions and ships and this and bombs and all the other things. The French apparently don't need it. Just hours after his flight left Guangzhou headed back to Paris, China launched a large military exercise around Taiwan. And when China, says it's our territory, the U.S. has promised to arm and defend it, but the French, not on board. Those exercises were a response to McCarthy meeting with Taiwan, and now there are talks. Macron and Xi talked about Taiwan intensely. He said, stability in the strait is of paramount importance. This came out from President Ursula von der Leyen. China's President Xi responded, said anyone who thought they could influence Beijing on Taiwan is deluded, and Macron agrees says Europeans cannot resolve the crisis in Ukraine. How can we credibly say on Taiwan, watch out, if you do something wrong, we will be there. If you really want to increase tensions, that's the way to do it. This is an actual accurate statement from Macron. Yeah, they cannot resolve the crisis in Ukraine. Sounds like they're maybe coming to that realization. Supposed to be this big show of force with all these sanctions and all of this strong Western bravado and we we're going to take out the Russians and Biden was extremely excited about this. Europe is more willing to accept a world in which China becomes a regional hegemon, said somebody from 
an economics group. During the meeting, she was visibly annoyed for being held responsible for the Ukraine conflict, and he downplayed his recent visit to Moscow. He was clearly enraged by the U.S. and very upset over Taiwan, by the Taiwanese president's transit through the U.S., and the fact that these issues are being raised by the Europeans. In this meeting, Macron and von der Leyen took similar lines on Taiwan. Macron subsequently spent more than four hours with President Xi, much of it with only translators present, and his tone was far more conciliatory than van der Leyen's. Macron suggested that Europe should reduce its dependence on the extraterritoriality of the U.S. dollar. That is a key policy objective of Moscow and Beijing. So all of the other you know, BRICS countries are formulating new agreements. We thought it was only going to be the Axis powers of World War III, which we Russia, China. Here we have the addition of more French neutrality. Yeah, maybe we should also kind of think about getting off the dollar. If the tensions between the two superpowers heat up, he says, we won't have the time nor the resources to finance this strategic autonomy and we will become vassals. Russia, China, Iran, other countries been hit by U.S. sanctions and the dollar denominated global financial system is on shaky ground. He said that while sitting on his airplane, he claimed to have already won the ideological battle on strategic autonomy for Europe. So if the Chinese are gonna be taking over Taiwan, now's probably a good time to do it because Europe is completely preoccupied. The United States is dumping money into Ukraine. Resources are spread thin. Europe does not seem like they're interested in another front. The French has already communicated that strategic autonomy is the law of the land there. He didn't address the ongoing question of U.S. security guarantees. They are on the permanent U.N. Security Council, but they have contributed far less to the defense of Ukraine than many other countries. As is common in France, they proofread this document and the statements about Taiwan were actually way worse. <laughs> so he spoke even more frankly about this, which means you can extrapolate that. And I think you can say that it's probably likely that the French are not going to be there at all along with most of Europe, if the Chinese do something with Taiwan. So the United States will be on their own, and that will not be a good situation. Marco Rubio also had questions about this. If the French are going to be abandoning the United States dollar and working with the Chinese, maybe the U.S. has something to say about it. Senator Marco Rubio did. President of France, Macron, goes to China, spends about six hours meeting with Xi Jinping, and then on the flight back, he talks to a bunch of reporters. And here's what he told the reporters. He told the reporters, number one, that it's time for Europe to break away from the United States, not to depend on the dollar, not to depend so much on us, uh, to become their own third superpower. The second thing he says, which I found really interesting, was that Europe needs to make sure that they don't get involved in conflicts that are not their conflicts. Specifically, that Europe should not be picking sides on Taiwan between the United States and China. And so I think this is a good moment for us to ask Europe does Macron speak for all of Europe? Is Macron now the head of Europe? Is he now the Good most question. powerful leader in Europe? Because if he is, then there's some things we're going to need to change. Uh, number one, you know, Europe, ha including France specifically, has depended heavily on the United States for 70 years for their own defense. In fact, when Macron tried to play global superpower and send troops to North Africa to fight terrorists, he couldn't even get his own troops there. We had to fly them there and we had to fly them back. He couldn't even get his own troops there. So if they're going to break off on their own and follow Macron's lead, uh, that's going to save us a lot of money. Good, yeah. As far as not getting involved in, in other conflicts that are not ours, we need to ask Europe, does he speak for them? Because we're pretty heavily involved in Ukraine right now. We're spending a lot we of are. Our taxpayer money. We are. On a European war. That's right. And I've supported that because I think it's in the national interest of the United States to be allies to our allies. But if our allies' position, if, if in fact Macron speaks for all of Europe and their position now is they're not going to pick sides between the U.S. and China over Taiwan, and maybe we shouldn't be take, picking sides either. Maybe right we on. should basically say we're going to focus on Taiwan and the threats that China poses and you guys handle Ukraine and Europe. So we Good need luck. to find out, does Macron speak for Macron or does Macron speak for Europe? And we need to get the answer to that pretty quickly because China is very excited about what he said. They enthusiastically support everything he said. And apparently he said even worse, but the French uh, presidency insisted that all the reporters that got that interview, that they had to review, they had to, the they wanted to review the transcript and they apparently took out stuff that was even more aggressive that he said. Disgusting. So we need to find out where Europe stands. If they don't want our help, no problem. We won't, don't need to give it to them. We can just cut off all aid to all of Europe and they can deal with their own problems. 
and we can deal with ours. Sounds good to me. Shout out to Marco Rubio for laying it out there. Yeah, and maybe they don't want us either. That's fine. They don't want us either. They don't want the dollar. They don't want all these things. Fine. Get you, you can have your wish. We've got our own problems here. We've got our own border. We've got our own infrastructure problems. We've got our own free speech and property rights problems here. We've got a bunch of things we could focus on to improve our lives without spending hundreds of billions of dollars on global foreign affairs. Thank you.